Welcome back everyone to The Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno. And today I'm crazy excited to be inside a beautiful Building 27, freshly remodeled with my good friend Matt here. We're gonna talk about continuous integration with App Center. How's it going, Matt? Hey, uh, yeah, it's doing really good. Good, um, yeah. Uh, as you said, we're gonna be talking about continuous integration, what that means, why it's important and how App Center can help you with that. Yeah, so what do you do here at Microsoft? What's your background uh, when it comes to the App Center team? So uh, I'm a software engineer on the App Center build team. I originally was working on Hockey App as a oh, software okay. uh, engineer on the SDK team, and then I switched roles when we like, launched App Center. Got it. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. So Hockey App essentially, so people that maybe have been using, I used Hockey App a lot in the previous, that was more of a kind of distributing your app and then also monitoring, correct? There was no build part of it or anything like that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So the main focus of Hockey App was like crashes and distribution and getting feedback from the users. And for App Center, we added the component of continuous integration through the build field feature, Got it. among other things. All right, so App Center is like a bunch of different services and build, is that like the starting point or can you use any of them or how does that kind of work? You can, you can use any of them as like, you can mix and match as okay. you want and you can even use if you want third party services. Ah, cool. But uh, like for, for us, it really starts with the build store usually. Like that ties in all the different features and services of App Center. Really. So if I'm a developer building mobile apps, one, what can you guys build? And then why do I even care? So, <laughs> that's always a good uh, question. Well, uh, well, well, App Center supports like all the major platforms that you know and love, like iOS, Android, and we and Windows, of course. And we support native development and uh, Objective C, Swift, Java, but also, of course, Xamarin. Got it. Cool. And React Native. And so, really, if you're in a in an enterprise where you're building all sorts of applications, sometimes you have a bunch of smattering of different things App Center has exactly. got you covered. Exactly, or if you're yeah. trying out different technologies, you know, you may, maybe have some legacy projects yeah. that were written natively and now you've selected to go Xamarin, Got it. for example. Okay. And uh, the reason why you care is that as you like, uh, stack up these, these apps and these projects um, and they become more complex, you want to make sure that they're always in good state. Got it. Yeah, so developers were pushing code, pushing code, pushing code. Exactly. And then, I don't want to break it. Exactly. Basically. Your, team, your team grows, people leave, knowledge gets transferred, but also you're constantly involving your product. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you're pushing your code to a repository, you want to make sure that the app still works. Like every like tiny component and every like flow of it still works. That's what continuous integration and continuous delivery is all about. Got it. Okay. So continuous integration, what we'll look at today, which is going to be building and then putting it on someone's device will be the delivery part, which we're going to have more episodes on App Center, which I'm super excited exactly. about. And, and integration's always been hard for me because I've always been working, you know, on an app, sometimes by myself, but then once I grow to working on a team with multiple people, like where do they even build it? Do I build it on this machine? Who has the key store? Who has the provisioning profiles? Like, so does App Center handle all that as well, or? Exactly, yeah. One of the typical struggles, for example, iOS apps was that you needed to run uh, the builds on a Mac, and Got you it. needed to host that Mac somewhere, right? Yeah, I have a little uh, Mac mini under my desk that just like, is exactly. just like that's in a what corner. A, yeah, that's what a lot of companies have gone for, and of course, it is very frustrating at points, and so App Center solves this by providing you with hosted Macs. Oh, very so cool. So you yeah. don't have to take care of like running the machines, updating software or anything. We do that for you. Okay. And you can just like run your builds on a Mac, uh, and your Windows builds are run on a Windows machine. Makes sense. Um, that we should like know how to do. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and and then you can just like uh, select your platform for your app and connect it to your repository, oh, okay. and then it uh, it just works. Like it finds the project in your uh, repository and it uh, builds that with the right tool set. Cool, so you want to show us that today? Sure. From scratch? Yeah. I love from scratch, because that's what I wanted. I said, Matt, if you're going to do it, I want someone brand new. Yeah. Sometimes I like to, I'm brand new too, and App Center is always evolving. So let's do it. You want to head over to your desk? Yeah. Cool, let's go. Let's go. All right, here we're at your beautiful desk. Look at this. Look at that very <laughs> vertical, crazy monitor. I love it. All right, so what are you going to show us today? So I'm going to show you three things. First, we're going to set up a new app in App Center Got right it. away and configure a build for it. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to show you how we uh, do builds for one of our tester apps oh, cool. uh, that we uh, ship for our users. Okay. And like this is going to be an Android project. And I'm also going to show you how it looks for iOS, both Xamarin apps. Oh, course. cool. Perfect. All right, cool. Let's set it up. Let's hop over to your Mac. All right. 
So, um, well, what is this? Where am I at right now? So this is uh, my App Center uh, account, like okay. my org. Uh, we have an App Center org here, and we already have two two apps. But I'm going to add another one. So if, for if I'm demo. working on all sorts of app, I'll just see them all lined in here, and I see Android and iOS. So I'm not. I'm creating a specific kind of project for iOS or Android or Windows. Yeah. So every every app is uh, one platform. Got it. Uh, and so you're going to see like all of your apps for different platforms. You can filter them by OS. You can use different uh, uh, ways to, to view the app list. Okay. And so I'm, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to click on Add New App. Okay. Uh, so this is like a typical dialog. I have to select a name for my app. I have to select the OS and the platform. Uh, so for this demo, I'd say I'll just call it Test App because Test is always great. And I'm going to use the Android uh, OS. Ah, some uh, things changed on the bottom down exactly. here. Exactly. So of course, like for for Android, you cannot write your app in Objective C or Swift. So we're switching to Java here, which is the like native equivalent for Android. And uh, so we're going to use uh, be using Xamarin, of course. And so I'm just going to click Add New App. It's going to create that app for me. So when I select that, what is that telling App Center? Specifically, and why do I have to select it? So it tells App Center that you want to have a Xamarin app, and we have it for Android. So okay. that helps it uh, when you, for example, when your app crashes, that we detect the right like way to uh, analyze your crashes, or uh, for Bill, that we look for the right uh, projects in your repository. It's like a hint, basically, like, hey, exactly. since I'm telling you that Xamarin Android, you're going to know how to do a bunch of stuff for me. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And so coming from from Hockey App, at least, like people always had this limitation that they only got two free apps. With App Center, you get as many free apps as you want. So you can create as many as you want. So oh, you're well. not like this is not like we don't look at this as a limitation that you can only select one platform for your app, right? Got it. So you um, set up as many apps as you want and then build as many you want for free? Yes. Cool. We have a free tier. Uh, can go into details more of that later. Yeah, we'll link to the pricing in the show notes for exactly. sure. But for for majority of people, Building for free. Exactly. In the cloud. Yeah. Cool. That's that's what we're aiming for. Let's do it. I see um, build, test, distribute, and build's number one. Exactly. So yeah, as we mentioned before, like build is usually one of our starting points. So uh, when we go select builds, uh, you can already see like we support uh, those three services right now. Of course, we support VSTS, mm -hmm. we support GitHub and Bitbucket. Oh, cool. So no matter where my code lives, public, private, doesn't matter. Exactly. We actually started out with GitHub first. Okay. So we got GitHub and Bitbucket and then VSTS. Oh, nice. So uh, we, we, like you know, we were going where the developers are. Most of them were on GitHub at the time. So now we have all of these three. Cool. And uh, so I'm just going to uh, go and select GitHub. I'm signed into my GitHub account, so I can see all my repositories here. And like me, you have about 5,000. So. Exactly. <laughs> you know all those test pro yeah. repositories. And um, I'm going to select this uh, App Center Hockey app okay. uh, repository. And what it's going to do is just going like, to link that repository to that app. Oh, it's so gonna, now they're best friends. Exactly. So whenever I push code to that repository, App Center is going to be notified for Oh, cool. And uh, so now, and of course, I can also see the branches that we have mm. in the repository. So I can, for example, go ahead and configure this um, this new branch that I just created, where I want to do uh, I have a Slack notification every single time uh, that a build completes. Oh, cool! So you're going to set up per branch essentially. Exactly. Like the build. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah. often I'm building out a master, but hey, I, you know, sometimes I have a thousand feature. Branches, but I don't want to exactly. have them all build, so I'm in control. Exactly. Okay. So typically, like you want to have your master branch go to production if you do deployment, Got or it. you want to have your develop branch uh, go to like testing or integration. Got it. So that way you can control the flow. So if you're like, hey, my dev branch, I'm going to go to internal QA, but master, I'm exactly. going to distribute later onto the exactly. app store. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. That's that's the model we are pursuing here. Let's set it up. Okay. So I can see the latest commit I have on that and when it was, and I can configure a build right here, and so what I can see is uh, it analyzed the repository in the background. So when I linked the repository and I selected that branch, is what it did is like it looked at the repository and like looked at the all the folds and files and found out since we know it's a Xamarin Android app yep. that we're looking for, it found this one project automatically. Just exactly. Done. Oh, that's don't cool. don't that's have nice. to do a thing. That's nice. And uh, if there were multiple. Uh, Android Xamarin projects in there, then of course I would get a list here. Oh, cool. But since there's only one, it's already pre selected for me. Got it. That's neat. Um, so I'm going to be building that for the release configuration. Now, those, those configurations come from the project, essentially? Exactly. Oh, yeah. nice. So if I had 
uh, you know, if I had a, a app center and an app store and I had all these different configurations, it would show them all there. Exactly. Oh, that's that's what we cool. analyze. Nice. Uh, and we're doing this for all the other platforms as well, too, Got it. like Android Java or uh, native iOS, of course. Um, then, uh, like the typical scenario when I have for continuous integration is every single time I push uh, commits to my repository, I want to have an integration. I want to have this build. So that's the build yeah. frequency that we already have selected here. And um, I'm going to uh, expand that here, and we're going to see that we also can pick uh, like some more intricate details, uh, like the mono version that I want to use for this uh, Xamarin project. Oh, so basically, you guys and gals have all of these versions, or like Mac somewhere, that are going to build, but you can go backwards compatible. So if you're exactly. today have your Mac CI set up, it's like, no, I need to build this against 501, yeah. you can totally do it. Exactly. So nice. yeah, we have an, have an offering like of all the uh, like stable and a couple of most like, widely used uh, yeah. legacy versions of the Xamarin uh, frameworks and uh, connected mono versions. That's super nice just uh, because. That you need for compatibility. Yeah, because right? sometimes you're not even ready to go to the next one. You're like, no, no, this is building today. Don't go to the next one until I'm ready. So exactly. it's nice that it sticks exactly. there. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to stay with the latest stable. Okay. Now. Uh, then I already mentioned like I want to hook up a Slack notification. Oh, cool. And so what I can do that with is I can use what we call build scripts. Uh -huh. So these are scripts that are uh, executed at predefined stages during the build lifecycle. For example, uh -huh. like when you just cloned your repository on the build agent, uh, when the build has finished, for example. And so this is what I have here. It's a like so-called post build script. So that runs every time a build is finished. And what I Got just it. did is it's a simple simple shell script, bash script. Uh, that I can like run like for example install npm packages oh, sure. and run a Slack notification. Yeah, and you can do anything there. So if you already have custom scripts exactly. that you're like changing version and strings and all sorts of stuff, you just put exactly. it in your GitHub repo. Is that where that lives? I don't see an upload button. Exactly. So it lives yeah. right in your repository, Got and it. the documentation link contains all the information like on how like naming schemes work and where hmm. to place them, and so it will detect them automatically for you if they're like in that particular spot. Um, then I'm going to select uh, to increment the version code. Yes, my favorite feature. I would like to say that I may be the reason that this feature exists. I'm not positive. <laughs> There's some long history there. But, but uh, so yeah, automatically increment. You're building nonstop. And as a developer, I know the app stores are very particular about version numbers. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We heard a lot of feedback. Uh, on that uh, particular feature, both like for app store reasons, but also like for Android, right? Like if you can, like if you're pushing out new releases from the app all the time, but they keep the same version and version code, you won't yeah. be able to install the new version yeah. uh, over an uh, already installed version. So what we're doing here is like we're uh, incrementing the version code mm -hmm. every single time. We're setting that in your uh, final APK oh, uh, nice. in, for an Android app or your IPA for an iOS app. Okay. And so uh, I'm going to use the the build idea here. So that's a, like a unique value that is like incrementing every time I build. Okay. So just to make sure that like every build has a higher version, I can install those. Um, so then, many sections. What else do we have here? Environment yeah, variables. So exactly. We do have environment oh. variables. So these are variables that you can pass in to your build flow or your build scripts. Oh, cool. So uh, for example, you can use them if you don't want to commit some secrets into uh, your repository. That's nice, yeah. You can just like set them here and then use them from your scripts. Gotcha. And we also make sure that, for example, if you if you uh, um, uh, set them here and if you set them to secret, that they're going to be masked from the build output. Oh, very like cool! So nobody's going to be able to see them. It's like your own little key value store. That so, way, you don't have to embed those super private secrets, and everything's done at build time, exactly. which is like the way you, you want to do it. Exactly. You don't yeah. want to have that in your repository history because yeah. then it's hard to do, remove that from there, right? Um, we're not going to use any of them uh, here. Um, so uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to sign those builds. So what mm -hmm. I want to do in the end is like I want to distribute the builds to one of my tester groups, and for that, in order to be them to be able to install them, of course, I have to sign them. Yeah, or if and you want to go to the app store, if you just want to put it on your own device, not in debug mode. Exactly. Sign it, yeah. Exactly. And we already like, for example, if you look down here for a second, like we already disable the distribute builds because we tell you, well, it's not signed. Not signed, so you can't do so it. So you cannot yeah. distribute. It doesn't make any sense, right? Okay. Uh, so we're going to sign them. And for Android, what I'm going to need usually is like I need a key store and uh, the credentials like key store password, key alias, and key password. And this here could be a 
JKS file, a key store file, exactly. Visual Studio generates these for you automatically, or exactly. you've done it what via the Java old school. I used to remember <laughs> exactly, that yeah. typing this super long command into a yeah. key store generation. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So I have one of those uh, just ready here. I'm just gonna drag and drop it here. Okay. Uh, and it's uh, also going to show me the name and just make sure that it's a valid file. So then that is um, stored inside of secure storage for my app somewhere? Exactly. Magical yeah. secure so, file store. <laughs> yes, so it's, it's going to be a secret. Like you're not going to be able to download it from, okay. the, from the build machine. Like if somebody is able to like, get access of those machines, like we are not even going to be able to use oh, it. Oh, cool. Nice. And uh, same way, I'm going to configure the signing credentials. Like, I need to provide keys to password, key alias, and key password. Similar story as with iOS, where I need to upload my certificate and my distribution uh, mm. profile. Um, then, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to select uh, to test it on a real device. So, very often, you have this situation where, like, you know, you build fine, your unit tests run fine, but something in your app is not right that makes it not launch on any uh, on a set of devices, yeah. especially for Android, right? Yeah, some multi-dex error could occur. Just you type some bad code in your app startup. Exactly. I've exactly. Done it before. Or like I'm not gonna all, lie. all the different like form factors, yeah. something causing your app to crash. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to select a test on real device. Is mm -hmm. we're going to when you build the app, every time we're going to provision a set of devices, okay. uh, and we're going to run a quick launch test. Just oh, like cool. install the app, launch it, see if it automatically, succeeds, or if it throws any uh, like errors or exceptions. Yeah. And we're going to like inform you here, of course, like please don't use any personal data in your tests. Like with the credentials and repository, it yeah. makes sense, right? Uh, and finally, uh, what I was intending to do is also uh, distribute those builds oh, to cool. one of my uh, apps. Uh, distribution groups. So I have a collaborators group. These are all the people I'm collaborating on that app with, and uh, it's already pre-selected. So you, and if you had multiple groups, would they all show up in there? Exactly. Or is, is that the idea? I guess exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we're going to have another a session on distribution. Yeah. And there you're going to see how to set up distribution groups. Got it. Uh, and then you can just select one of them here. And every time uh, I push a build. Uh, I push a commit, I push a build, and then it's going to distribute that release to my test. Got it, cool. Uh, so that's like the continuous delivery part. Oh, nice. And finally, um, what we also have is like we have a build status badge. Oh, a little nice, those little, those little exactly. badges for your, for exactly. your, so if you're open source, or for me, I just like to have them on my status page. Like, no, it's all green, yeah. I swear. Exactly. So, cool, and that would be per branch then, I guess, technically. Yes. Oh, very yes. cool. And then uh, we could just uh, click Save and Build. Okay. And so it's going to configure all of what I just set up, and it's going to kick off my first build. Oh, OK. Nice. And so it's we already cute. see it running. Um, like it queued the build, it's waiting. And any second now, it should be running. So what's actually happening here behind the scenes, I guess? What actually happened when I click that Save, and then what actually is happening currently right now? Yeah, so um, what's happening is like we're saving that configuration off to our cloud. And we're provisioning a machine, like a Mac okay. in that case, to run that. And of course, it sometimes takes a couple of seconds to, to get one of our build agents running. Uh, or like get one of those uh, associated with that particular build. Oh, cool. And now it's started, and I see the build logs uh, flowing in. And uh, you can already see it's uh, downloading a set of tasks, and it will be performing all the steps that I need to build my uh, Xamarin Android app. Oh, so cool. it's going to check out my source. Of course, like we see here, uh, it's going to detect uh, that I need to do some like preemptive uh, setup Scripts for uh, for uh, Xamarin Android, especially. Uh, then it's going to detect uh, all the NuGets and gonna, just going to restore all my NuGets for my project, so that I can build. Yeah. Uh, and after that, it's going to um, it's going to run just typical MS typical build, build, like oh, nice. just like you do on your local machine. Yep. So cool. So this will be going for a few minutes here. So what would this exactly. look like if I did iOS? Uh, I know you said you had one already set up ahead of time. Uh, so yeah, I do have a, an iOS app here. OK, so this is like kind of that configuring the same branch. Exactly. And we okay. see a small like, set of small differences. For example, we do have a different set of projects here. Uh -huh. uh, since we cannot uh, reliably detect all of them, we, you have to pick one. Well, I guess we're going to use this one. Right? OK, That got sounds it, yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, also, I can see like same configurations as we uh, We have mono version selection. Uh, on iOS, we also need you to select uh, the matching Xcode version. Makes sense. Um, same story as with build scripts and uh, build Everything, type and frequency. Yeah. We do have build type for a device or simulated uh, build, got files it, yeah. as well. 
Um, and then uh, there is just like the same story. You can configure environment variables, signing, and, and, and distribution. If, if you want to set one of these up real quick, you could just say, hey, I have a branch. I'm just going to do debug. And you could just leave a bunch of this stuff off, because exactly. you're like, oh, I'm going to delete this later, right? Yeah. So it's kind of as much or as little as you want in this build. Exactly. Yeah, it comes with sensible defaults. Yeah. So most of the time, you can just like set it up, use the right project, save and build, and just see how it goes. Gotcha. So now, as new versions of Xamarin come out, if we scroll up to this top and new versions of Xcode come out, is App Center going to automatically change those, or how does that part work? Because that, that's important to me as a developer. Yeah. So we strive to always support the latest versions, like mm -hmm. latest stable versions. So whenever, uh, say, Apple releases a new version of Xcode or there's a new version of Xamarin, uh, we will install those and provision those on the Macs and the Windows machines okay. to make sure that your builds are still running. Cool. Nice. Let's check in on Android and let's see if uh, see what's exactly. happening. So oh. I already have uh, an Android app that uh, performed mm. this particular build with a launch test. Oh, cool. And so this is what I'm going to see once the build is finished. So it's my build details page. Okay. And from here, what I can do is, like, of course, I can still like browse the logs, and see All what logs. happened. And get, see. I mean, who doesn't love logs? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's my favorite part. Exactly. Especially when something debugging. goes wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's when you want to see yeah. those logs. Until then, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah. Um, then you can see how long it took, and we'll see like the provisioning of the devices takes some time for launch. So, so this here, this 10 minutes, is because it not only built the application, but it was waiting for that launch screen test, exactly. which I assume added time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how much, how long would it would it have taken if I didn't have that launch screen? Is under it, five minutes. Under five minutes. Okay. So because since you have to actually provision a physical device, install on a device, report exactly. back, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So maybe you only want to do that on certain branches. Is that kind of or, exactly, or at least yeah. I guess faster. I guess you want to do this on like your mainline integration branches where you do production, where you really want to make sure that Got your quality it. is solid. Then can take some time to yeah. build, but you want to make sure that quality is there. Yeah, um, Ten minutes not bad though for doing all of that all at once. Yeah. And um, so yeah, um, apart from that, like I can see it was launch tested, oh, so okay. I can quickly jump to the results here. I like that it gives you all that little information, like it was signed, like here's your results, here's everything that you need to know about this exactly. build. Exactly. Yeah. So I can see, and we're going to dive into this in another session, but I can see real quick here. Okay, the launch test succeeded. It's good to go. Uh, let me jump back to my build details. I can see a sign, as you mentioned. Uh, then over here, I can download. I can download either the build, like say the APK, so it's just going to download that to my machine. Oh, nice. Uh, so it's, uh, yep, and there it is. Uh, or I can download the logs. Cool. And for iOS apps, for example, of course, we can also we offer you a download of symbols. Oh, like yeah, the symbols the that you exactly. Yeah. Um, and finally, what I can do, like if I hadn't set up distribution or I wanted to manually distribute to another uh, uh, distribution group here, I can also select distribute from here. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, for this app, I do have a couple more uh, distribution groups set up. So I can say, mm, I want to push this particular release. That's good. That I want to have to my beta testers. So I'm going to click Next. And we already pre-populated the release notes with mm. your latest commit message. Oh, that's really cool. And you can, of course, use Markdown in here, and we have a preview for that. I'm just going to leave it as is. I think those are it's spot Perfect. On. That's what every spot tester on, loves to right? see. <laughs> Changes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to click distribute the build. And the same thing is going to happen as when I distribute it. So okay. it's going to create a new release in distribution in App Center for me, and people are going to be able to install from there. Nice. So from setting up, linking it to their GitHub repo, building it all in the cloud magically, and then saw the test results, downloaded it, distributed it. Exactly. Without ever actually leaving the build service right there. Like we didn't actually yeah. click on any other tabs at all. Yeah. Super cool. Matt, awesome. This has been fantastic. We'll add all the links in the show notes so you can actually do this yourself. But that was awesome. I'm always learning so many of the nice little features in there. So until next time, Matt, thank you for joining me and showing this off. Thanks, James. This has been another episode of the Xamarin Show. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe up over there, down over there. You know what to do, ding that bell. And thanks for watching.